welcome back to Birch Salt. My name is Kate and we are going to be doing a garden tour today. It's been a couple of months since I've done a garden tour and I'm really excited because a lot has changed since my last one. And if you haven't caught my last one, I'll put a little link up on one of the sides of the screen <laughs> for you to check out and watch later. This is my own personal garden. I've been sharing my garden journey on YouTube now officially one year. I hit the one year mark on June 2nd and it's been a lot of fun. And if you're wondering why am I talking into a tiny little microphone, it's it's actually a clip-on microphone, but since my hair is down, I didn't want it interfering with the audio, so tiny microphone it is. <laughs> I live in Maine, zone 5B, so we have a lot of changes from season to season, but also from month to month. With that said, stay tuned. We have a lot to see and some new changes to the garden space. Let's go! We are entering into the side front garden and there's a new addition. I received a bunch of divisions of hostas from my neighbor. I popped them in around this hydrangea tree. I wasn't expecting them to fill in like they did, but they are very happy where they are. And I believe these may be fire and ice hostas. And I planted them in the alternating pattern. So you'll see the one right there is a cream in the center with the green on the outside and then alternating with the green in the middle with the white on the outside there and if we switch over to the other side here are some additional newly planted hostas there's the lily plantain lily dancing queen on the right hand side it's almost like a chartreuse color and then we have the empress Wu hosta right there the creeping flocks have now passed there's just a dusting of blooms left here is the side of the front porch. You'll see I had a bit of an accident earlier this spring where I thought I had moved these hostas to a different area in the garden, but I did not. And somehow I missed all of them while planting the gladiolus. So we have a gladiolus and hosta garden. I've never seen it before. There's probably a reason for it, <laughs> but I am just letting it do its thing right now. And who knows, maybe it'll catch on. There's a Mr. Bowling Ball. All of the daffs, the daffodils have now faded. I'm about to restain the port, so it was pressure washed last night. That's why I have the little doormats hanging over the side. The newly planted window boxes. And I have, what do I have? Super Tunia Jazzberry, and then there's the Bordeaux over there with the alyssum. I think the Bordeaux might be my favorite color of Super Tunia right now. The roses are just popping off here. They are very happy. I had a bit of aphids come in and do a little bit of damage, so a little bit to prune out. Otherwise, very happy. I don't spray any chemicals in the garden. I try to just use water, spray with a jet stream, or just kind of let things work themselves out naturally. I have used neem oil before in the past, which helps a little bit, but this year I'm really trying to stay away from using it at all, actually. These are double knockout roses, I believe. We have some Veronica Speedwell, I believe, Veronica. Pin cushion flowers that are just sprouting. You'll see I have some delphiniums and lots of foxgloves that are abating the picket fence. In front of the house, now you can really see the swoop this year. The foxgloves are in their second year and I believe that this may be the last year that they will flower and I may have to start some more from seeds again for the following year. This year I did a variation of the swoop planting underneath. Last year I did all bubblegum super tunias and this year I did a alternating color of purple with the Bordeaux 
white alyssum, and then the jazzberry. Also along the right hand side, I planted a whole lane, I'm calling it, sunflower lane of, you guessed it, sunflower seeds. I'm going to be cutting those down and selling them at the cut flower stand here later this summer, early fall. Let's get a closer look. These roses are just, I don't know if you can tell all of the buds. I use rose tone, which is from Espoma. And after this first blush, I will give them another feeding of rose tone. I do apply an application in early spring and you'll see we are just rewarded with buds and blooms all over. And this one in the middle is actually a division from this bigger one over here. It's very happy. This is just so beautiful. I'm loving all of these. Definitely more blooms the second year. It's very red, white, and blue <laughs> themed this year. Actually, oh, that's so funny. I guess I have the, yeah, the pink, white, and purple throughout the whole garden. The snapdragons are also budding up. I've got some lilies that are also budding up. These are day lilies. So we'll have a pop of orange here soon. Oh my gosh, this is glorious. And here we are on the left side of the garden space. And there's the small cottage kitchen garden in the back. Let me just back up. There's the hedge of lilacs, more foxgloves. I had a beautiful showing of tulips and daffodils at my last garden tour. Here we are just about to enter into the side cottage garden. We just now are entering into the blue bearded irises fading out. They were absolutely stunning show. I love them also for their beautiful grass-like texture and the movement they add to the garden. The crab apple tree was also beautiful this year. And you'll see it slowly framing out the garden space. Here is the main garden space. You'll see I have the pink mink clematis on the left that is just taking off two statuesque almost incredible hydrangeas right there and there a bunch of tulips that i will be cutting back here soon and the climbing roses that are also budding up now this has been a fun experiment right here i am working on creating a sweet pea and cosmo privacy hedge because i won't stay on this long because it's ugly but the recycling uh, cans over here, I'm trying my best to screen those. So we're getting there. Here, when we warm up just a little bit more, they will take off as well. Now that we're entering into the garden, I'll point out more of those buds. Oh no, there's aphids. I don't know how well you can see, but there's aphids on my roses, so I'm going to have to spray them with water to try to get them out of there. Even with the aphids, there's a lot of buds. The boxwood hedge is coming together. Let me swoop slowly. Over here, this is a better view. Next year, I will be trimming them so they will probably create a little mini hedge by next year. 
Then there's the lilacs, not lilacs, uh, lavender that I have in the little pot. Here, I am working on creating a dahlia garden in the raised beds. And that makeshift arbor, I will actually be growing some birdhouse gourds and sweet peas along on this side. And then when I get to finishing the other side, I'm hoping I can grow some loofah. I just planted my second edition of the loofah seeds and something ate my first round. So I'm keeping my toes, my fingers, and I wish I could cross my eyes, but I can't. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully nothing eats them the second time around. It does look a little messy at this point because I have been busy taking out the tulips that were in my pots now that they have yellowed and died back. I'm drying them out so that way I can store them in the basement until fall to plant them again. And I have a few more to get to. But as you'll see, the dahlias are very, very happy. Especially over here. A fall project will also be taking out these posts that I know are upside down. And I will be revamping these garden beds, these raised garden beds. I think the last garden tour I said I want to make them three feet tall. That, <laughs> that is probably going to be too tall. I'll make them... Gosh, what are they right now? Those look like about eight, six to eight inches tall. So between probably two feet tall, actually, is what I'm thinking. Now this back bed, I really love. This is more of my perennial bed. So you'll see I have my elderberry. We have some sedum, echinacea, some alliums, iris, cypress, spruce, lace cap hydrangea back there salvia and then some day lilies and i did sprinkle in some cut flower seeds back here so let's hope the birds don't eat all of them this may be perhaps one of my favorite views right now back in the corner of the garden there's a nice borrowed view of the rhododendrons from my neighbor and the greenhouse. And if you notice that branch hanging or draped across the greenhouse, that is my own doing. I am envisioning, as you'll see, the black-eyed Susan vine in my head will climb up over the greenhouse and engulf it. This is just an experimental year as I'm claiming it. My dahlias right here, I had something completely chomp them down almost essentially overnight. So I got some mesh bags and draped them over them. Hopefully they have enough greenery to come back, but time will tell. Over here, I planted pennycress, love in a mist, and then also some fennel. You'll see some sweet peas. Those are actually seeds from last year that are just spreading up on their own. And I am just letting them go. We have had an incredible amount of rain this past uh, couple of weeks. And unfortunately, the seeds that I did sow, I think that they just got completely washed out. So I did a second sowing over here as well. Now I'm going to go into the greenhouse and set you down. Now I am inside the greenhouse, which is a new addition as of last fall. It's the perfect size for this little garden space and I'm able to have my accoutrement of pots, seeds, and a little makeshift potting station. It comes in handy with storing things over the winter time because here in Maine we get very cold, very snowy, and a lot of things, unfortunately, are not frost hardy so if I can keep them cozied up and bundled up in here then hopefully they make it another year. Looking straight out out of the greenhouse that is the newest change. We did have a fence over here where it blocked the entire view 
down to the backyard. We removed that and then completed adding all of this gravel. That way we now have a complete loop of crushed stone or pea gravel from this main potager kitchen or side cottage garden to the back of the house and then around to the front. So I'm going to take you back here and show you what I am working on in the backyard. Before I do, here's a view of the greenhouse. And please forgive the hose I was watering and it happens. Sometimes you leave things out. All right, now we are in the backyard. Let me turn the phone around so you can see what I am currently working on at the moment. When we first enter the backyard, we are greeted by a miniature wall at the moment of Arbavita. I believe these are Thuja Green Arbavita or Arbavite, depending on where you live. These are now in there. These are a year and a half old. I planted them when they were down to that first rung on the fence. I think I got them for a steal at, I almost said the supermarket. Not at the supermarket, but at Home Depot. I got them for $10 each, and some of them have already doubled in size. So that will be a nice living privacy fence once they get older. And this is the current state of the backyard. We've been working pretty hard trying to get the grass green, which this year is really the first year that it has. Been trying to keep up with the fertilizing of the lawn. We did plant a clover seed mix, which was recommended to us from a local garden center. They have a wonderful expert there who recommended, based on our soil, a mix of clover, which I hear is actually pretty good for your lawn. It helps with nitrogen enrichment, I believe, and really fills in and it actually feels wonderful on the feet. So no more crispy grass this year. There's still quite a bit to get to, but I'm very pleased with how this is coming out. We have hookra in the front, and then there's lamb's ear, catmint, some daisies about to bloom, peony, bleeding heart, lilies, and a few boxwoods, and then hostas in the back. The plan is to continuing a bed all the way down this way. And will somehow cohesively mix with that new bed over there. Okay, so now that we've seen the side garden, the front garden, and part of the back garden, let me show you my last garden space. Here is my back side garden. I have a giant arbavita. You can see remnants of the spiral I had cut into it last year at some point, I, or maybe two years ago. So it's due for another attempt at the spiral. My azalea, which actually got hit really bad with leaf gall, which is a fungus that attacks azaleas and rhododendrons. And I think it was from all of the rain that we've been having in the cooler temperatures. It just really one after my azalea, but I cleaned out as much as I could. With that, you do not want to put those leaves into your compost because you don't want the fungus to spread. Best thing to do, take out those leaves with that fungus and then throw that away and not reintroduce it to your garden. But the blooms still look gorgeous nonetheless, and I'm not worried about it coming back. We have tall phlox, some alliums, and then my little peony garden. I'm working on around the fountain and a hidden rhododendron over to the side. And then my newest, newest bed is right here. And this is where I did my first attempt at sheet mulching, which if you haven't done sheet mulching before, it helps to save you from digging a whole lot, planting what you want to plant, but then putting cardboard around those plants and then covering with topsoil or mulch 
That way you don't have to dig up all of the sod and then water it all in. Over time, the cardboard will break down and will help to enrich the soil as well. I have some Branera. I have a Sespi Gold. This is a beautiful Doubles Cannon Azalea that is now fading. We have an Astilvi, a Wygela, and then another Peony where I just harvested the blooms. So that concludes this month's garden tour of June. I'm very excited at how much has changed over the last couple of months. It's been a beautiful but rainy spring. As you'll see, a lot of things have exploded because of that rain, which is great. We were able to complete the back side of the house with the gravel, which is so exciting because now we can create a new space to relax in and complete this cohesiveness of this garden space that I'm looking for. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing the complete garden tour for June. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Because I cut. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. This is so, oh, this is so embarrassing. And now I'm going to have the giggle. It's garden tour for secrets with this weird little lip thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay.